Hey everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today is a video all about benchmarking. Specifically, it's a video about benchmarking the brand new NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760, the video card that is located right here. This is the reference design version from NVIDIA and I've been sort of putting it through its paces over the past couple days to see what kind of performance we get. Um, now when it comes to card comparisons, I really wanted this video to be about how this card falls into line with the other cards in the NVIDIA GeForce GTX lineup. So. Uh, we're sort of in a, in, a, in a transition period right now. You have the 700 series, which is uh, handling the top end of NVIDIA's available g graphics cards. Then you also have the 600 series, which is still hanging around up to the GTX 660, which is still there and is still viable and is still available for sale. Now the 760 is replacing, so to speak, the 660 Ti, and I have one of those right here. And uh, I'm just going to come out and say I did not include the 660 Ti in these benchmarks. Why? Well, there's lots of different reasons. Uh, part is that I found that the uh, 760 was beating the 660 Ti in uh, most of the benchmarks. Pretty much, unless you're handling a benchmark or you're working with a benchmark that really, really, really cares about uh, CUDA cores, uh, you're going to get better performance with the 760 overall. I actually found the 760 to be a better competitor for the 670. Uh, the 670 that I happened to test was ASUS's DirectCU2 or DirectCU Mini version that's right here, which is because it was the closest one for me to reach over and grab. Uh, this one is factory overclock, so bear that in mind uh, when you're comparing the benchmarks. But uh, one unique thing I did figure out was that uh, the, the boost clock of the 760 and the boost clock of the 670 DirectCU Mini were exactly the same, which is 1,136. I'm like 99% sure that that's accurate. I'll correct it with like an annotation if it's wrong. 1,136, sure, okay. Uh, but moving on from there, you'll notice that the, uh, six, uh, the 760 and the 670 uh, kind of trade blows back and forth, very, very evenly matched. So um, take that as good news if you're anybody but somebody who recently bought a 670, I don't know. But uh, 670 is there for your uh, enjoyments. We also have the 680, of course, and uh, don't worry, the flagship from the 600 series is still there and it's still doing a great job. You would need to go beyond the 760 to beat it, as you should see in the benchmarks. Uh, specifically, you'd have to go to, say, a 770 or something along those lines. Uh, this is the uh, Gigabyte Wind Force 2 edition of the 770, and this is a top card uh, in this particular roundup of benchmarks. Uh, so that pretty much does it. Apart from that, I do want to point out that the 760 uh, does include NVIDIA's new 700 series uh, features, uh, such as GPU Boost 2.0, uh, which does a fantastic job of automatically overclocking the GPU based on its temperature, as well as the uh, temperature of the components uh, on the card. Uh, with that in mind, uh, it's really easy to overclock. You can load up uh, Precision X from EVGA, for example, play around the sliders a little bit. You can get yourself a nice, uh, healthy overclock, particularly if you have a system with really good airflow helps keep, that helps keep the graphics card nice and cool. Um, apart from that, you also get, let's see, some cool features like there's an H.264 uh, rendering process built into the GPU's pipeline. Uh, that actually enables it to do stuff like outputting video to NVIDIA Shield, for example. It also allows uh, for a really cool feature available in GeForce Experience coming soon this summer uh, called Shadow Play, uh, which is an excellent uh, it sort of keeps tabs of the last, I think, 10 or 20 minutes of gameplay that you've done. And then at any moment, you can pop out and tell it, I want to, I want to save that information. So if you're just playing a game, it will automatically capture it. it has a way, way uh, smaller footprint and smaller uh, system impact. Also smaller file size than using Fraps, for example. Uh, so keep your eye out for Shadow Play coming this summer, we are told. And uh, I'd say that's about enough exposition for now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the system specs as well as a quick card comparison. So comparing all four of these cards, you will probably notice they're all based on the GK104 GPU. This is originally introduced with the 680. It's got long legs. We've been seeing some refined versions of it uh, with the 770 and now the 760. Uh, the 760's biggest uh, shortcoming, if you can put it that way, is the number of CUDA cores it has, which is 1,152 based on uh, six SMX units uh, compared to the 670, which has 1,344, and the 680, which has 1,536. The 770, also 1536, uh, but the 770 is a pretty juiced version of the GK104, which also has uh, 7,000 speed memory, which is insanely fast. Uh, also, when you're looking at the memory here, you'll notice uh, we have the same memory, 2 gigabytes uh, for every card. 
Um, all of the non-770 cards are uh, running at 6008, uh, which is, again, the standard that started with the 680. Uh, for memory clocks, uh, I'm sorry, for GPU clocks, uh, here's where you'll notice a pretty big jump from the uh, 760. It's going to be running along at 980 base clock, 1033 boost clock, and the fastest I saw it run in my test was 1136, uh, which is pretty nice compared to the 670s, 915 slash 980, and the 680s, 1006 slash 1058. Uh, the rest of the specs are listed there. If you want to do a side-by-side -side comparison, let's go ahead and take a look at the test bed. And here is, of course, a look at the Newegg TV test bed. We're still rocking the Inwin D frame. We've got a Hercules 1600 watt power supply back there from Rosewill. And uh, the basis of our system is the Rampage uh, 4 Formula motherboard and a Intel Core i7 3970X CPU, uh, which is currently overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz. Next to it, we have some G-Skill Trident X memory, uh, which is running at 1866. Uh, everything is being cooled with a Cooler Master Sidon XL CPU cooler. I shouldn't say everything, but just the CPU. Uh, and then, of course, we have our graphics card in there, which is, uh, of course, the GTX uh, 760 right now. Uh, and lastly, we have our SSD, which you can't really see, but it's, it's tucked away in there. That's a SanDisk uh, Ultra Plus 256 gig. <laughs> And that wraps it up for the benchmarks. Hopefully that gives you guys a, a better idea of how this card actually performs in some synthetic tests as well as some real world tests. I try to do a combination of both to give you a sort of an apples to apples comparison as well as a real world comparison. I know there's lots of opinions on the benchmarks out there so we try to sort of give a little bit of everything. Uh, I wanted to point out that even though the uh, 760 here was kind of coming in on, on the bottom end of most of the, of the benchmarks, kind of trading blows with the 670 back and forth, uh, all of these other cards here cost significantly more uh, than the 760 does at launch. So that's kind of giving you an idea of the type of performance you can get for a much lower price point um, now that NVIDIA has released this, uh, which from what we understand is going to be uh, the, the newest card in the 700 series for at least a little while. So uh, if you guys are interested in a new middle of the road graphics card that's going to really uh, kind of beat the crap out of uh, any game that you want to play at 1080 of course uh, check out the 760 we'll have a link down in the description with uh, links to all of the add-in vendor cards such as the what is this like this like this gigabyte one that we have right here uh, all of those will be available on newegg.com of course uh, if you enjoyed this video and found it useful go ahead and click the like button also don't forget to subscribe to newegg tv for more tech videos I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and uh, you've been watching Newegg TV, and that's all I'm going to say in this video. Goodbye.